Okay, this morning we're going to, uh, I'm actually going to share my heart. I'm going to share a little bit on, on an aspect of fear. Last Sunday we saw how fear as an emotion can ruin our destiny. And see, today we're going to look at fear that can keep us in bondage. Okay, and both the fears uh, determine the destiny that we choose. Come with me to Proverbs 29, 25. Good words to remember. Proverbs 29, verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare. That means of the fear of man is a trap. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Can we read that out together? The fear of man brings a snare, but the, fear, but the trust in the Lord he shall keep us safe. So the fear of man is a huge thing. The fear of man is a trap. So your problems is not the trap. Your battles are not the trap. The fear of man is the trap. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 20, God gives the people an instruction before they fight a battle, before they fight a war. All of us are up against battles. Whether we like it or not, we're faced with challenges, and that becomes your battle. And this instruction that God gave to them then is still valid for us even now. So quickly, let's look at verses 1 to 3. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, more than one, huge army, What's the first requirement? Do not, do not, do not, do not be afraid of them. They're just men. They're people. Don't be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you out from the land of Egypt. So it shall be when you are on the verge of the battle. You know, the battle is six months, you're full of faith. Three months down the line, you're wondering, you're praying. Two months before the battle, you're quoting scriptures. One day before the, uh, uh, the battle, Lord, help! You panic. It's always at the end. It's like doing your exams. Six months, you're relaxed. Yeah, I know everything. Two days, you're wondering what you know. You, you panic. You, you get into that pressure. And God is saying on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people, and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart, what? What's the word? Be faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. There are degrees of fear, and I put down some numbers to those degrees. Being terrified is 100% fearful. You really need some healing and deliverance. 100%, your life is controlled with fear. Being terrified. Even before the circumstance can knock on your door, you're terrified. You're frightened of the future. You're frightened of things happening. To cross the road, you're frightened. You're terrified. That's 100% of fear. Being afraid is 50%. It is is f- afraid. Something might bad happen or things may not work around. A little bit, 50%. Faint-hearted is 10%. Slide that faint-hearted, that uncertainty, that insecure feeling. Faint-hearted. Now, the stock market dropped from 10% to 1%. I dropped it. You see, the thing is, even if you tolerate 1% of fear... You qualify to lose the battle. And that's why God was saying, no level of fear you must tolerate if you're going to win the battle by facing the enemy. When you face the enemy stronger than you, bigger than you, more powerful than you, do not tolerate fear in your life. Because that will cause you to be defeated. So our battle is only one. One battle, whatever the circumstances, only one battle we must overcome. Tell me what's that battle? Fear. God's battle is circumstances to overcome. Our battle is the fear of those circumstances. 
And if we could only be single-minded and overcome the fears that challenges us on a day-to-day level, God will take care of the rest of the situation. He will take care of the enemy. He will take care of the battle. And that's right throughout Scripture. You see, our emotions are motivators. And our emotion of fear must motivate us to put our trust in God and let God intervene on our behalf. He is the one that keeps us safe. The fear of man is a trap, but the man who trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. Safe from what? Safe from fear. Not the enemy, safe from fear. Because fear is the one thing that causes us to be defeated before the enemy. Now, there are many people who spend hours fasting and praying. And one of the most unscriptural prayers you can make is saying, God, take away this battle. I don't want to fight this battle. Take away this battle. Lord, remove the enemies before me. You know what? God must be saying that's a joke. Nowhere you see in Scripture God taking the battle uh, away from you. All you see in Scripture, the battle is right there in front of you, but God gives you the grace and the courage to face the enemy, and He gives us the assurance He will over, He'll help us to overcome the enemy. Is that making sense to you? So don't have wishful thinking, God, take away this battle, take away this battle. It doesn't operate that way. Nowhere in Scripture. If you find, please show me. You see, why is fear such a bad thing? Because even the strongest man can be reduced to his knees because of fear. Now, I don't know whether you've seen this, but I've seen some real tall, strong men with big muscles. When they see a cockroach on their bed, they jump up and scream and tell the wife, kill it, kill it, kill it. And I thought to myself, you're twice bigger than your wife, and you're a hundred times bigger than the cockroach, and you're jumping on the bed and asking your wife to kill a cockroach. You know why? It has nothing to do with the cockroach, it has to do with your fear. A small thing can keep you paralyzed and crippled. We see in 1 Samuel 17, 24, an incident that's very familiar to all of us, how one man, Goliath, intimidated, terrorized the army of Israel. All of these were fighting men. All of them had armors. But one thing they didn't have was courage. And because they lacked courage, they hid in fear against that one man. Till one day, God raised a shepherd boy who had no spear, had no shield, had no army background, but one thing he had that the army didn't have, and say the word, it is, it is, it is. Hey, be courageous and say it. What did he have? Yeah, now you sound you have some courage. What did he have? The one thing to overcome a battle is... And this shepherd boy had something that the army didn't have. You can have all your intellect. You can have all your muscles. But if you don't have courage, you're on a sinking ship. One shepherd boy made a drastic impact on the history of that nation because of courage. That's what courage does. It turns the situation around. David stepped up to the challenge because he was not fearful. He looked the giant in his eye. He faced him face head on. And God brought the victory. Can you see the combination? You face the enemy, God brings the victory. Say this after me. I face the enemy, God gives me the victory. You overcome fear, God overcomes the battle. The most scariest moment of their life turned into the most victory day of their life because one man had courage. (laughs) 
Satan's strap is fear. That's a strap. The fear of man is a trap. And that's the Satan's trap that he set for all of us. And we fall into the trap, the enemy gets a hold of us. He doesn't get a hold of us straight away. He waits for us to fall into a trap. And once we've given in to fear, the enemy says, now that's mine. I want to show you a video. Just to brush up your memory what a trap is. Here's a trap. Can you see the trap? You know what? Your <laughs> you know your problems is like a bait. The enemy sets up a bait for you. And he watches how this rat no, I shouldn't say that. How this individual will walk into that trap. He's watching. And the minute you get to, into that trap, he has a hold on you. Don't fall in that trap of being afraid of the enemy. The only solution to overcome our fears is to find our trust in God. Not coping with your fears, but finding trust in the midst of your fears. That's the only way to deal with your fears. Not self-management, not coping with it, but coming to God and finding your confidence in God. When you find your confidence in God, you start trusting Him. He keeps you safe from your panic attacks. He keeps you safe from all the fears that tr trouble you. Because our fears are many, our problems are many. I like that statement. You like to say that after me? Because my fears are many, my problems are many. But if you notice, if you eradicate fear, there's hardly any problem to think of. Isn't that true? Your fears are many, so your problems are many. In Daniel chapter 3, the Bible gives us a real life incident of how King Nebuchadnezzar, he hit the, the pinnacle of a selfie. He didn't stop with the photograph. He built an image of himself. I mean, that's bad. And not only he built a big image of himself, he called everyone in the province, called every one of the neighboring cities, come, we're going to have a dedication. Dedication of what? Me in the statue. And so he calls for that great day. Everyone come. The musicians are sent. The trumpets are blown. And now when the trumpets blow, everyone should bow and acknowledge that image. What would you have done in that situation? Would you have said, after all, we must honor our authority in both? What would you have done? And here in, in verse 9, God gives us an example of what happened. And Negabin, Negabin, Nebuchadnezzar was furious with three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His attitude turns towards them. Why? Because he didn't kneel. Three people. Can you imagine three people standing out in a congregation? Three people standing out in a classroom. Three people standing out in the midst of your whole, class, um, whole school. And here, three people standing out in front of a whole nation. Only three. Everyone is bowing. Three people stand upright. Picture that in your mind. He was so angry. The king was so furious. You know, when your emotions get the better of you, you do ridiculous things. Isn't that true? You do things to vent your anger, which is not even logical. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter. It was just the expression of how angry he was. His, heart, his anger was really red hot. He heated the furnace seven times more commanded some of the strongest soldiers, three ordinary believers, the strongest soldiers in the army, tied them up, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, throw them into the burning fire furnace. So these men, they went fully dressed, wearing their robes, their trousers, their turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the burning furnace. 
The king command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They couldn't even come close. The soldiers were killed. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that were tied and thrown into the fire? And they replied, Certainly, Your Majesty. He says, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. You see, it's a very powerful story. One event, they were willing to risk their life, but not to give in to the fear of the king. And if you read that story, the three Hebrew children say, even if it means to die, we will not bow our knee before this image. Even if it meant us dying. You know why people are so attracted with ISIS and many people tend to join ISIS? It's because I found out one thing. People don't respect you for what you live for. People respect you for what you're willing to die for. Hello? It's what you're willing to die for that speaks volumes than you saying, this is what I live for. No one takes notice of what you live for. Everyone takes notice for what you're willing to die for. Because when you're willing to die for something, it shows your conviction, your determination of what is true. Isn't that right? These three Hebrew children were willing to die for what they believed. Risking everything, their very life, their family, everything, they stood for what they believed was right. Look at the outcome of it. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High. He changed his opinion. He was angry with them at one time. Now his opinion changes. He has favor in his eyes towards them. He's calling them out. Come here, Shadrach. Come here, Meshach and Abednego. Come out of the fire. You put me in. They should have stayed there. You come get us out. No, but that's not... That's me. That's not Shadrach. It's calling them. Come out. All the prefects, satraps, governors, royal advisors, all crowding around them. What a scene. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies. Their hair was untouched. Their robes were not scorched. And there was not even a sniff, not even a smell of fire on these three bodies. This is what it means when the Bible says, they that trust in the Lord will be kept safe. You may be in the fire, you may be in the furnace, you may be in the storm, but they that trust in Him, He will keep you safe. But the fear of man is a trap. How much of our life is being built on the fear of men? And if you begin to look at your life, and if you find fear as the foundation of your decisions, foundations of what you did, you're building on a very unhealthy foundation that God never wanted you to build your life on. Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's become a believer now. One, three men's courage turned a nation right around. Three men of courage made a believer out of that kingdom. And it says, he sent an angel and he rescued his servant. He's testifying now. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against their God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, will be cut into pieces. Their houses will be burned into piles of rubble, rubble for no God can save like they were. He was an activist. 
He moved from unbeliever, believer, giving testimony, and now he's taking action. That's a radical change in one day's time. Why? Three Hebrew children never compromised. Three Hebrew children never gave in to fear. Three Hebrew children didn't mind risking everything for what they believed. But God vindicated them. God kept them safe even in the fire. The fear of man is a trap. They didn't walk into it. But they that trust in God will be kept safe. Then Daniel not only was, uh, in Daniel chapter 3, not only did God vindicate them, the king promoted them. Both of them were promoted in the province of Babylon. Doesn't it pay to trust in God rather than live in fear? You, you not only get a nation turn around, the king turn around, you get promotion. That one act of courage changed the entire kingdom. I hope you can picture what happened in, that, in those days. The most scary moment of their lives was turned around to be the most vic victorious time of their life. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because God can turn the most scariest thing in your life to be the most victorious thing in your life. How many of you believe that? You shout an amen. amen. The most scary moment of your life can turn around to be the most victorious moment if you begin to trust God. There's a victory waiting for you. Are you willing to lose, uh, risk losing your reputation because you want to honor God? Are you willing to lose that? Maybe not every one of us will be called to make a public confession of what we believe. But every day, we live with the fear of either losing the risk of losing our reputation by what we stand for, honesty. You're willing to lose your reputation for the sake of what is right. Are you willing to risk losing a business deal because it's not righteous? Because you fear God and you're trusting God. Are you willing to risk losing your friends? Because they, you don't agree with what they, uh, they say or what they do. We're always at the challenge of, of the risk of losing something if we give in to fear. But the day you overcome fear, you don't live in that risk. You live in the fact of certainty that God will keep you safe. We're going to break bread in, this, in a few minutes' time. But I believe that there's areas of our lives that God wants to minister to in each one of our lives. And that's why I kept it short so that we can pray and that we could see God come and, and touch and, and minister to our lives. And the first one I would like us to, like to, to highlight is the fear of man. We are brought up in a culture where you were corrected as a child, be careful of what you say. Neighbors are listening to you. Be careful with your exams. What others will say about you. What your relatives will say about you. And you have grown up always thinking what other people will say about you. Other people's opinion. You don't even consider what God will say. You honor people's opinions about God. And that's living in the fear of man. And everything you do, you want to protect your reputation. Everything you want to do is protect your dignity. You're frightened to take decisions because it may not earn the approval of men. And if you live that way, always living to earn the approval of people or wondering what will people say, what will your parents say, what will your family say, you will end up making wrong choices. And there are many here in this room who made wrong choices based on the fear of man, fear of what, may, uh, what others will say. And as a result, you're suffering the consequences of a wrong choice. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. 
And if you ever want to enjoy the wisdom of God in any given situation, begin to cultivate the fear of God. The fear of God is not frightening, being frightened of God. The fear of God is living in reverence of God, knowing that His wisdom is bigger than your wisdom. His power is greater than any power that we have. He has the final say over our land. You begin to live in that reverence before God. You get wisdom. Wisdom for your decisions. Wisdom to make right choices. Living in the fear of God. Father, into your courts we will enter. Maker of heaven and earth. We tremble in your Holy presence, glory, glory in your sanctuary, splendor and majesty, Lord, before you all I adore you. All the earth will declare that your love is everywhere. Seasons out Hear the trees Joyful cry Praising you So loud A new song